Everyday Math Chapter 2 Study Guide. Using a calculator. On your test, you will have problems. You need to take out your calculator and do the problem. The first thing you're going to do is make sure your calculator is on. Then, make sure it's clear. That means you should see a zero. Look at the problem. 634 plus 249. Push 6, 3, and 4. 6, 3, 4. That's all you should see. Push plus because of that. Push 2, 4, 9. The bottom numbers. Push equal 883. That's your answer. Understanding polygons. Remember, a polygon is a closed shape made by lines. What you see here is something that's closed, there's no openings, and they're lines. These are not curves, these are lines, straight lines. This is a polygon. It's lines and it's closed. This is a polygon. Lines and it's closed. This is not a polygon. It has lines, but it is open. Not a polygon. This is a right angle. When you make a right angle, use your ruler. This little box right here tells me that it's a right angle. So if you draw two lines together like this, or two lines like this, or two lines like this, and I didn't see you draw them, I know by looking to see that box, that little box right there, there it is, there it is, that that's a right angle. That means it's 90 degrees. Here, there's no box, so there is no right angles. There's no little box. There are no right angles. This is a parallelogram, a shape with sides that are parallel and equal in length. Here's a parallelogram. Now, the reason I know that it's a parallelogram is because there's picture, cue, picture clues to help me. If you look at these two lines, you see one line here and one line here. That tells me that this line and this line are parallel. And this line here has two little lines. This line has two little lines. That tells me that these two lines are parallel. When a shape has sides that are parallel and equal in length, I know that it's a parallelogram. You can use this symbol or you can move in the opposite direction and put them like this. Remember, those types of lines tell me that both sides are equal. Now, if you look at this parallelogram, this half a circle right here, half a circle, it tells me that the opposite angles, opposite means the other side, the opposite angles are equal. So I don't need to know what this angle is, and I don't need to know what this angle is. I know that they're equal because it says A, and it has this side, A, and it has this curve, and those two are equal angles. I know these two are equal angles because it has a line and says B, and this has a line and says B. This means the shape with sides that are e parallel, and then the angles, the opposite angles are equal. That is a parallelogram. Here's some tough words that I want to go over. When you read graphs, you have to learn these new words. Let's go over them. Maximum, largest or biggest. Range, the difference between the largest, max, and the smallest, min. Take the maximum minus the minimum and you get the range. Mode, the number shown the most. Median. Typical number, middle number. 
understanding graphs. This is a chart right here. It says number of pencils sold, 15 pencils sold, 16 pencils sold, 17 pencils sold, and so on. Number of students, four students, two students, five students, and so on. Now it says, how many students sold 20 pencils? Hmm, how do you figure that out? First, you look at 20 pencils. Number of pencils sold, 20. Then what? Move your finger right. Move your finger right. Okay. Oh, that means that I'm under the number of students that sold 20 pencils. How many is that? If you can't read tallies, look here. Six students. Either count the number of students or look what I wrote. Six students. That is what you will write right here. Now, what is the maximum number of pencils sold? What is the maximum number of pencils sold? Find the biggest number under pencils sold. Find the biggest number under pencils sold. Okay? Number of pencils. Biggest number, largest number, maximum number. Oh, 23. Okay. 20. Three. What is the range of the number of pencils sold? What is the range of the number of pencils sold? Hmm, what do I do? First, answer from number 10. Okay, so go back to number 10, because you have to figure out the max and the min. Because remember, max minus min, maximum minus the minimum, the largest minus the smallest is the range. So. Answer from number 10 tells me maximum. Number 10, what is the maximum? 23, okay? So go ahead and write 23. Find the smallest number, the minimum. Find the smallest number, the minimum, under number of pencils sold. Number of pencils sold, what's the smallest number or the minimum? 15, right? 15. Now, take the maximum number minus the minimum number, and you get the range. So, 23 minus 15. Now remember, you can always use a calculator. So go ahead and do 23 minus 15 equals 8. Write eight. That's your range. Go back up, write eight. The next question asks you, what is the median or typical number of pencils sold by students? Now there's many ways to do this problem. I'm gonna show you the cross out numbers method. The cross out numbers method. So what you do is you go ahead and look at all the pencils sold and how many pencils each student sold. Now I did the work for you. What I did is it says 15 pencils were sold by four students. 15 pencils were sold by four students. So what I did is I wrote 15, 15, 15, 15, four times, four times. That tells me that fifth, four students sold 15 pencils. I did that for all of these and that's what I have. The cross out method is finding the middle number, finding the middle number um, of pencils sold. So watch what I do. Cross this one out, cross the last one out. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Keep going. One, two, one, two, one, Two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Uh oh, I just crossed out two numbers there. So, what that it means is the last one that I crossed out, the one, two, that is going to be your answer 18. 18. Now, let's just pretend that there was one number left. There was one number left. 
and it was sitting right there and it never got crossed out. That means that would be the answer. In this case, the last number I crossed out would be the answer. What is the mode? The mode is the most frequent number, the most frequent number of pencils sold. And this is a graph. First we're gonna make a graph so then you can figure out the mode. So in order to make this graph and put the information in, you have to use your chart. Your chart fills in a graph. Graphs help you fill a chart out. So this is what we're doing. Let's figure this out. We need to um, look at your graph, pencil sold. We need to color in how many students sold 15 pencils. So you can sh use a pencil or you can use a highlighter. It's up to you, whatever's easier. Let's go and find out how many students sold 15 pencils. 15 pencils, number of pencils sold, four students. 15 pencils, four students. So you go to 15 and you shade it in. Let's go to the next one, 16 pencils. Go to 16 pencils, two students. Two students sold 16 pencils. Go to 16, fill in two. 17 pencils, 17 pencils. That would be five students. Five students for 17 pencils. Sometimes I'll go up to the five and then I just know to color that much. And that's just a strategy I've used. Oops, I got some in there. Okay. Okay, as you can see, I finished the graph. Now that you have the graph, it's visual. It's a picture of what's going on right here. It's a picture of what's going on. So now that we made the graph, um, in order to figure out the mode, most frequent number, you have to figure out what number is the largest or the tallest shaded part. So if you look here, which one's the tallest? Yes, 20. So the mode is 20. The mode is 20. So I'm gonna go ahead and write 20. The mode is 20. Nice job.